Hello to all the members of the KSJ family. And when I say family, I really mean it. Because you people are the pillar of this family. You people have contributed so much to the growth of this KSJ teaching and you have been constantly doing that. A really big thank you to all of you who are watching this, who are sharing this, who are subscribing to our channel and everything, right? So a big salute to all of you. Welcome back to this cost accounting standards session and the cost accounting standard that we are going to do in this session is cost accounting standard 2 that is capacity determination. Now what is this capacity determination and why is it important to study uh, capacity determination? How is it relevant from the business point of view? Let's say you are uh, writing an examination and you have the capacity to write for only two hours. At the same time, one of your friend has the capacity to write the examination for three hours. Now, who will be able to complete the examination? Whether you will be able to complete it or not? No, sir, because after two hours, you will get really tired. Your hands will be really tired and you won't be able to complete the paper. Whereas, on the other hand, your friend will be able to complete it easily because he or she has the capacity to write for three hours. So, it is very important uh, to determine this capacity. Why is it important now? Because if you know that you have the capacity to write for only two hours, which will not be in your favor during the examination, you can work on it, you can improve it. Isn't it? The similar thing is with the business. For business, what is capacity? Capacity is, how can you determine the capacity for any business? The capacity is determined by the number of units they are producing. Number of units produced. Right? So this is how the capacity is being determined for any of the businesses that what is the number of the units that they are producing, what is the capacity they have, what is the actual capacity they are utilizing. Right? If you have the potential and if you are not utilizing your potential, then you are wasting it, isn't it? You have the potential to study for 14 hours, but you are studying for just 4 hours. That means you are not using your potential, you are not using your capacity of studying for 14 hours, what will happen sir? The re ultimate result will be you will not be able to score good marks, you will not, uh, you might not be able to clear the examination, you might not be able to reach that level where you want to reach because you are not utilizing your optimum capacity, optimum potential. The same thing is with the business. If a business has a machinery right, which can produce 10,000 units in a day, whereas the business is manufacturing only 500 units a day from that machinery. So is it good or bad? It has the capacity to manufacture 10,000 units, but it is manufacturing only 500. So is it good? No, sir. Obviously, they are not utilizing their capacity. They have incurred the cost on the machinery, but they will not be able to recover that cost from the machinery. Why? Because they are not manufacturing, they are not using their capacity and they are not manufacturing to their full potential. That is why this cost accounting standard makes sense and it holds the importance. Introduction, the standard deals with the principles and the methods of classification and determination of capacity of an entity for producing goods and services for ascertainment of the cost of the product or service and the presentation and disclosure in the cost statement. Right, so in the cost statement, it is relevant to give what is the capacity that you have, what is the capacity at which you are operating. So all these things hold importance, right? Whether that company is optimally utilizing its capacity or not, it is very important. Okay, okay. Before we move forward, one very important update for all of you, uh, guys. The uh, this uh, CMA study material question discussion series is available on our mobile app. You can go there, subscribe to the course. It is a paid course, nominally paid course, in which we'll be discussing each and every question of the CMA module, right? Currently, paper number eight is available, paper number for old course, right? For new course also, we'll be coming up with these things and for the financial management and other subjects also, we'll be coming up with that, right? So for now, paper number eight, old course is available. Please download the app from where you can download these free files also of the cost accounting standards as well as you can subscribe to that one course which is going to be really useful, okay? So objective, the objective of this standard is to bring uniformity and consistency in the principles and methods of determination of capacity with a reasonable accuracy. See, uh, why this word reasonable accuracy? Because 
the capacity of any machinery which is installed it can be reasonably identified right you cannot say it with 100% accuracy that it will manufacture 10000 units only it can be 9000 it can be 9500 it can be more than 10000 also so you have to identify it with the reasonable accuracy that on an average this many units will be manufactured right the scope shall be applied to the cost statement including those requiring the attestation which requires determination of capacity for assignment of overheads. Okay, Because the overheads, when we are talking about the absorption of overheads, now he has used the word assignment of overheads, when we have to absorb it on the basis of number of units, right? that means you should know your capacity. Then you will be able to correctly assign, correctly absorb the overheads. Right? So there are a few definitions that you need to understand regarding this uh, capacity. The first uh, definition that you need to understand is installed capacity. What is installed capacity is the maximum capacity of producing the goods or providing the services according to the manufacturer's specifications or the determined through an expert study. Whenever we are installing a machinery, the company uh, whose machinery is there, whose machinery we are installing or uh, the experts will come to install that machinery, they will tell us that this machinery can produce the maximum this number of units right it cannot produce more than that so this is the maximum capacity this is the maximum number of units which can be produced and if we try to push it beyond that then there can be breakages there can be breakdowns of that machinery clear so installed capacity is the maximum capacity of producing the goods or services according to manufacturer's specification manufacturer specification means the manufacturer from whom we are we have purchased the machinery. For example, very simple example, let's say you buy a car, right? You buy Tata Nano. Now the company says this Tata Nano can run for maximum 2 lakh kilometers, it will not run beyond that. Now if you try to push it beyond 2 lakh kilometers, what will happen? It will have frequent breakages, breakdowns, you will have to frequently go for the repair, it will ask for the extra cost. So it is the maximum capacity that that car can run for. Similar is the way for the machinery. Clear? Then installed capacity then is the normal capacity. Normal capacity is on an average under the normal circumstances what is the production that you are achieving. Let's say the installed capacity is to produce 10,000 units. On an average normal under normal circumstances you are able to manufacture 9,000 units. Right? Under normal circumstances. Why? Because these 10,000 units will be uh, there, uh, will be manufactured if you are working for let's say 24 hours. But because there will be breaks, uh, the workers need break also, there will be lunch break also, there will be tea break also. So the normal production under normal circumstances is 9,000 units. Is the production achieved or achievable on an average over a number of period or the seasons under the normal circumstances? Taking into account the loss of capacity resulting from planned maintenance. There can be planned maintenance that this machinery requires maintenance after every 6 hours. Right? It needs to be cleaned. A part of the machinery needs to be cleaned after every 6 hours. So that is a planned maintenance. So during those, uh, during, after the 6 hours, during the time of maintenance, there will be no manufacturing. Right? Then, then is the actual capacity. Now your normal circumstances, your capacity is to manufacture 9000 units. Now he says, what is the actual number of units that you have produced? What is the actual capacity that you have utilized? Let's say you have manufactured 7000 units only. Right? This is the actual production. The actual capacity utilization is the volume of production achieved or service provided in a specified period expressed as a percentage of installed capacity. It can be expressed in percentage. I am expressing it in the number of units, right? So installed is the maximum number of units. 9000 is the under normal circumstances. What is the production that you should be getting? But actually what you got is 7000 units. So is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? Sir, it is not good. And if, if under normal circumstances, your production should have been 9,000 units, but you are getting, you are manufacturing only 7,000 units. That means this difference, this difference is due to abnormal reasons. Right? That is what we call it as abnormal idle capacity. Difference between the normal capacity 
and the actual capacity. So the normal capacity is 9000. What is actual capacity? 7000. The difference between that 2000 units is due to the abnormal idle time, the machine breakdown, right? Uh, due to the loss of electricity, electricity is not there, you are not able to manufacture. So these are abnormal reasons. So these should have been avoided. The machine should have been, uh, you know, maintained properly for electricity. If there is no electricity in your area, then you should have the generator set that you can run the machinery on. Isn't it? So under normal circumstances, what is the number of units that is normally achievable and what we have actually achieved? If there is a difference, that is due to abnormal reasons. Then there is normal idle capacity. Normal idle capacity is the difference between installed and normal capacity, right? That uh, there is a lunch time, there is planned maintenance. So normal idle capacity is the difference between installed capacity and normal capacity. Nor installed is 10,000, normal is 9,000. So this 1,000 is normal idle time, sir. This is due to the normal idle time. Right, because your workers need rest also, your workers need to have the lunch also, your workers need to have the tea break also, isn't it? So all these things, there can be a planned maintenance of uh, the machinery as we have just discussed. So this is normal reasons, these, these are incorporated into the job, these are unavoidable, this will happen, right? Then is determination of capacity. Then he says the capacity shall be determined in terms of the units of production or services or the equivalent machine or man hours. So it can be determined that how many units you are producing and how many hours you are working. The labor is working, the machine is working. How for how many hours? What is the capacity to work and how many is the actual number of hours being taken to manufacture the number of units, right? So installed capacity can be determined on the basis of technical specification, technical evaluation, capacities of individual or interrelated production or uh, operation centers, operational constraints are there, right? Or capacity of critical machines or equipment, number of shifts or the machine hours or the man hours. So all, there are many factors which impact the installed capacity. Uh, installed capacity shall be reassessed in case of any change in the addition, deletion, modification or for any other reason for the date of such change, right? If you make some addition to that machinery, let's say uh, there is a particular machinery, if you upgrade that machinery, then what will be the installed capacity? You need to reassess that. It might increase the installed capacity, right? If you are upgrading your machinery and earlier your machinery was manufacturing 5000 units, now with the upgrade, there is a possibility that the installed capacity, that is the maximum number of units, might increase to 7,000 or 8,000 instead of 5,000. Clear? Similarly, the normal capacity is determined after suitable adjustment to nor, uh, installed capacity. What are the suitable adjustments? Suitable adjustment is the normal idle time. Right? So this is the suitable adjustment. Normal idle time. So you have to adjust the normal idle time from the installed capacity to find out the normal capacity. Normal idle capacity, I can say not time, I can say capacity, right? The adjustment may be in the following nature, time loss due to scheduled preventive or planned maintenance, number of shifts or machine hours or man hours, holidays, normal shutdown days, normal idle time, normal time lost in the batch changeover. So all these things are the normal reasons which we have started in the labor costing also, right? So what are the disclosures you have to make? You have to disclose the various types of capacity that what is your installed capacity? What is your normal capacity? What is the actual capacity? Why these disclosures are important? Because uh, the investors or uh, the information readers, they are very much interested in knowing that whether you are using the optimal capacity or not, right? Uh, the basis for arriving at the different types of capacity changes in the installed capacity or normal capacity with reason reasons thereof. Capacity enhanced through outsourcing Right? Outsourcing means that you are manufacturing t-shirt. Now 10,000 t-shirts you have been manufacturing in-house. That is in your own factory. Now what you are doing is you are increasing your capacity by giving additional 5,000 uh, t-shirts as an outsourcing. You are giving it to an outside agency that you manufacture on our behalf and give it to us. Right? So capacity outsourced to others, details of actual production of goods and services provided, self-manufactured goods produced provided to outsourcing, reasons for low capacity utilization. This is very important for any businessman to know, right? That why there is low capacity utilization, why you are not utilizing your uh, optimal capacity, abnormal cost due to underutilization of capacity. So all these reasons are very, very important. So these are the disclosures which are required to be 
made that what is the capacity whether you are using the optimal capacity or not if not then what are the reasons whether these are normal reasons or abnormal reasons if these are abnormal reasons they needs to be checked why the uh, why there uh, these reasons are there right and what is your installed capacity if there is a change in the installed capacity or any of the capacity then why there is a change there is addition deletion or whatever the reasons you need to disclose each and everything related to the capacity right so this was our cost accounting standard 2 that is on capacity determination these terms are important right so we are done with this cs2 in the next lecture we'll continue with cost accounting standard 3 see you guys in the next lecture till then stay safe stay healthy keep studying keep sharing thank you so much